morning everyone welcome back to alleyways or if it's your first time here welcome to my channel thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and if you haven't already please 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 make sure to join the alleyways family subscribe to my channel give this video a big thumbs up and turn on post notifications so you know when i have new content okay if i'm a little slow today i had the hardest time sleeping last night it got really hot in my room I had to sleep at like 11.30, woke up at 1.30, was up until 4, um, and then we just woke up at 8.30, and we got a tour at Saint chapelle at 10. It is now like 9, I forget what time really, it's time to go. We made it. <laughs> We um, took a cab from our hotel and it took about 25 minutes, but we're here. Super easy to get in. There was no line. There was a security checkpoint and then a place to scan your tickets. It was like very clearly indicated. We got the audio guy <clears throat> and we're just in the basement now and we're going to make all the stops in here and I'll try and show you guys everything. So here are some of the original pieces of stonework. These were taken down between 1855 and 1867. Beautiful. Chapelle is Louis the Ninth had this private chapel commissioned to house some of the relics from the Passion of the Christ. So this was a place basically to house pieces that were associated with the crucifixion, like the crown of thorns and a piece of, I believe a piece of wood from the cross, and things of that nature. It was also used as a private place of worship. And on the audio tour, which we got, um, they're saying this alcove here is where the king sat for uh, private mass. And then here is where his mother sat. So these little alcoves can be set apart on the side or for the family to use. And then in the stained glass, you can see there's like four panels in each section of windows and all of them depict special scenes from the Bible. And then of course up there, is a little structure that was the area that was used to house the relics. you guys on the wall. I hope you guys can see the painting. It's painted to look like there is kind of a sheer hanging over the bottom half. How gorgeous is that? Just the amount of detail is really incredible. And then of course in the back it's just breathtaking. Breathtakingly beautiful. apostles that are holding up the pillars as you can see it says they are pillars of faith and they're all holding if you look you see that medallion across as a reminder that this building is consecrated Next up, we have tickets to the Conciergerie. 
super excited. The Saint Chapelle was stunning. The audio guide has 74 stops. It basically explains all the scenes in the window and it's only like six bucks. So I really highly recommend it, but let's get in here now. All right, we're inside. They give you an iPad that you like basically scan little codes with and then it puts information up on the screen that's included in the price of the ticket. But we're gonna walk around and see what there is to see. I think that the stations are numbered. I'm figuring this out so you guys don't have to. But all I really know about the conciergerie, I'm excited to learn more, was that this is where Marie Antoinette was held prisoner before her execution. So, interesting history. Let's go get it. This first room that you walk into in the basement was the kitchen. How crazy is that? They said this is like the, the original palace of France was here on this Ile de Cité, like a little island in the middle of the Seine. And so this, I guess, was part of the kitchen for the palace. Still trying to figure it out. But anyway, gorgeous kitchen, huh? So you find these boxes and then you scan with your iPad and then the information comes up. So just look for these if you come. All right, so this is on the tablet kind of showing what it looked like originally. So here are remains of the original staircase that went from here, the lower chamber, up into the great upper chamber of the palace. Look, that's all that's left. Must have caved in or something. Now we have come into the common kitchen. They said that this, the common kitchen was used, you can see the fireplaces in the corner, really to feed the servants, where like a separate kitchen would have been used to feed the royal family. But one of the things that's really cool on this, we just saw this, like I said, shows kind of what would have been cooking here, what everything would have looked like. And on this little table here, you can see there's uh, two pieces of paper you can click. This was this was a menu from a banquet in the 1300s. Look at these courses. The courses aren't like now, it's like a bunch of meat insides and over three courses. And then the other paper on the table showed that the chef for uh, the king at the time was the author of the first cookbook. Wow. Charles V, his chef, made the first cookbook and it was a medieval bestseller. So how cool is that that all of this kind of stuff was prepared here? So I told you guys wrong. I had kind of messed up. This first big room that we were in was the Hall of Men at Arms. So this is where they said they had like special meetings of knights, people in the military, they would have special judicial meetings. Um, that would be basically like a court of law and people could come in and pay debts or they would, you know, basically dull off sentencing. And this is kind of what it looked like. This is what they're showing us. So you can see like a table there, the partition so that if there is multiple hearings or meetings being held at one time, that there could be privacy. This area that we are in now was the men's prison. And actually it shows in this area here, there was two floors and prisoners had to get on a ladder to climb up to the mezzanine level. They were required to be outside in the courtyard out of their cells between 8 a.m. and sunset. And this area was notorious for being pretty disgusting, smelling terrible, and being infested with rats. Oof, terrible. Here are some of the keys and locks from the conciergerie. And then this is a facsimile of the prison register of the conciergerie. Okay, so now we are in an area that has become a chapel that uh, was supposedly put on the site where Marie Antoinette was imprisoned. 
So back here you can see after the end of the, not the end of the revolution, but sometime after they uh, dedicated this area that was believed to be where she was held to her memory. There's a black wall with silver tears and then this is where they believe her bed was. So you can see. Here you can see Maria Antonio. This looks kind of almost like a headstone. I did know that she was placed in a comic grave and then maybe guessing this is where her cell was. an orange chair that's thought to be one of Mary Antoinette's while she was here. And I don't know what that is. Oh, that's a chest that was supposed to have belonged to her. Hey, there's supposed to be her knitting needle. This is a headband she wore. What is this? A message cage? A shoe. A tiny little shoe. have a tour guide here because it's a little confusing just because the history like throughout history this building has served multiple purposes so it was a palace it was a prison and it wasn't quite clear without a guide what it was at what time or if it was all of those things all at once but it was still really cool to see very sad but also beautiful um but now it's i think it's like a one o'clock and so we're gonna go find some lunch nearby. But yeah, it was, a, it was a great morning. I definitely think that both of these are like great, great tours to take while you're here. And the combined ticket is like 20 bucks to get in to Saint Chapelle and the Conciergerie. So really not bad at all. Very cool stuff to see. A lot of history if you love history like us. So we had a great time now. It's time for lunch, and then I'm thinking I want a nap. What was, do you think was the most interesting thing you saw in there? Well, you go first, and I'll sit by. Well, I was really interested to see like where they held Marie Antoinette, and so that probably was my favorite, and it's so interesting to see how, uh, I guess the view of her changed over time, where, you know, it was like a very dank, depressing prison, but now it's turned into like an honorary chapel for her. So, it was beautiful now, but sad to think about the history. Did you have a favorite? Yeah, I would definitely say that as well, her internets, um, the chapel. And yeah, and then they um, had a lot also, of- Also, it was really cool how they had those like, iPads that showed you what it looked like in different times uh, in history. Yep. And I think the museum should do that. because I agree. Really nice it was, because if it's not restored or if it's not like kind of set up how it was, it can be difficult to imagine, so that was a really nice touch to get to see what it looked like then. Um, yeah, really nice. Y'all, it's cold. I will check back in with y'all when we get to lunch. Let's look at our walk. How gorgeous is this? It feels just so like quintessentially Parisian to me. Magical. All right, we've arrived. Lady do my go. Here we go. 
because this is my first time in Paris, I want to do all the touristy things. I'm so excited. Here we go. I do my ghost clothes for renovation, so we're going next door to Cafe de Flor. Look how beautiful. We audible to Cafe de Flor. So we're here inside. Very cozy. Let's take a look at the menu. I can tell you guys, I am hungry. I'm ready for lunch. And I think I really need a Coke. So let's go. Okay, so I ordered the ham and cheese omelet and I did get my Coke. And it's good. It's bringing me back to life. We know got tea and a club sandwich. Hey fam, <laughs> so it's been a little bit since we've seen each other. We ate at Cafe de Flor. It was really good. It was nice. I know it's very, um, well now I'm very famous. I do my girls closed for a while for renovations, I think. Uh, the sign said for the next few weeks, um, which was disappointing because we really wanted to go, but also pie. Um, we finished up lunch and then we walked all the way back to our hotel, which was so nice. The neighborhood that we were in was absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. Saint-Germain. Um, and we just kind of window shopped and looked around, but it was really cold and rainy and we were both exhausted. <laughs> so we came back to the hotel and we had been sleeping for about the last three hours. <laughs> um, we have a dinner tonight at Le Maurice. I'm gonna try to vlog it, uh, but I don't know how vlog friendly the restaurant is. Um, I'm just gonna do my best. I, I realize I'm a little bit off on this trip. I apologize if the vlogs aren't the best. I'm just trying to balance, like really enjoying everything because this has been a bucket list trip for so long for me and shooting and uh, being present and so I'm doing my best. I hope you guys are enjoying these vlogs. I'm excited for dinner tonight. I think it's going to be a great experience, but clearly <laughs> I do ready. I'm in my nightgown and kind of looking a mess. So let's go get ready. Three, two. Halfway there. Makeup is done. I'll probably have to touch it up a little bit as we go. Hold on. Let me put this slide on so you guys can see. Better in this slide, isn't it? Uh, but look. They put these little apples in our room every day that I love. Little snacking apples. And they're delicious. I mean, I have one because I'm getting like starving. It's really hot in this bathroom. So I was opening up the bathroom doors to like let some just cold air in. And look how magical the Eiffel Tower looks out here. <gasps> Ooh. Gorgeous. I'm finally ready for dinner. So, as you can see, I'm wearing a very dramatic white blouse. This is from Shein, and this actually, the skirt was my mom's. And then I got these little, like, ostrich feather slap bracelets off of Amazon. I'll put a link to them. Um, I just, like, love anything with ostrich feathers, and I think that they, like, really dress up the shirt. I did my hair half up, half down. So this is the whole look. What do we think, fam? I'm excited. I'm so excited. I'm actually ready on time for a change, which is such a relief. It just takes longer than you think. So our reservation is at 8, 7.30. It's like really, really close to our hotel. So let's see about going ahead and walking over.
because that meal was an experience. It was, it was incredible. It was, the, the staff were so lovely. Each course was so interesting. A lot of the things to me were like incredibly delicious. Some things were just new flavors for me, but it was really great to get to experience all of that. Such a treat. I think it's like a once in a lifetime meal. So thanks for coming along. But after dinner, we just came in. We walked back to the hotel because it's only, it's just several blocks. Took a few pictures and then we needed to pack up because tomorrow we are going to Disneyland Paris. It's midnight. I'm getting up at 6.30. <laughs> so I need to go get some sleep, but please join me back here tomorrow for a magical day at Disneyland Paris. I can't wait to see you next time right here on Alleyways. Bye.